Hello students! Welcome back to Maestrang Teki YouTube channel! If you haven't watched our video lesson about projectile motion, pause the video and click the links in the description box below. Today's video lesson is a new topic. Grade 9 Science Quarter 4 Week 3 lesson is all about momentum and impulse. Here's our learning objectives. Examine effects and predict causes of collision-related damages or injuries. And relate impulse and momentum to collision of objects. So, what are you waiting for? Listen carefully and jot down notes as we learn about momentum and impulse. Keep on watching! In the previous topic, we talked about projectile motion. At this point, you already know how to describe the motions and the relationship of the components of a projectile. Now, let us start with momentum and impulse. Suppose you play basketball with your friends. What will happen to the ball if it hits the board instead of inside the ring? How about if you bump into another player that is bigger than you? These questions will be answered as you go along with this video lesson. One of the most common team sports is basketball. Imagine two teams who are involved in a really tight tournament quarterfinals. Team A has two points ahead of Team B. Later on in the match, a player from Team B scores a three-point shot and followed by a series of two-point shots. Team B couldn't stop their momentum. And what do you mean by momentum? In our example a while ago, these are the things that we need to consider in defining momentum. First, the object has a mass. And second, the object is moving. Any object with a quantity of matter has momentum. And momentum simply means mass and motion. It is equal to the product of mass and velocity. Mathematically, it is expressed as P is equal to M times V, where P is the momentum in kilogram meter per second, M is the mass of the moving object in kilogram, and V refers to the velocity of the moving object in meter per second. Let us try to solve this problem. Sample problem 1. What is the momentum of a 22 kilogram grocery cart which travels at 1.2 meter per second? First, let us have the given. The mass of the grocery cart is 22 kilograms. It travels with the velocity of 1.2 meter per second. And we are looking for the P or the momentum. Here's our formula. To get the momentum, we need to get the product of mass and velocity. Now, let us solve this problem. Our solution, P is equal to the mass which is 22 kilograms. The velocity, which is 1.2 meter per second, multiplying these two, the product is 26.4 and the unit is kilogram meter per second. Take note how you write the unit for momentum. And this is our final answer. Next, how about the momentum of an object that is not moving? Just like a car that is parked. Remember class? If any object of any mass is not moving, it has zero momentum since its velocity is zero. Let us consider another situation and try to answer the given questions. Suppose you ride a bus from Iligan City to Cagayan de Oro. What do you think will happen to the bus after it passes along a curvy road? Will it slow down? Will it speed up? Or the velocity will not change at all. If your answer is letter A, then you are correct. The bus will slow down if it passes along a curvy road. Next question. After passing curvy road, the bus travels in a straight road. How will you describe the velocity of the bus? It increases, decreases, or not change at all? If your answer is letter A, then you are correct. After passing curvy road and travels a straight road, the velocity of the bus will increase. Next, there were only 25 passengers in the bus. Along the way, four passengers dropped 
at Lagindingan Bus Stop and another four passengers dropped off at Opal Bus Stop. What can you say about the mass of the bus? It increases, decreases, or not change at all? If your answer is letter B, then you are correct. The mass of the bus decreases. Based on our example situation, we can say that when the object slows down or moves faster, its velocity decreases or increases. If there is a change in the velocity of the mass of an object, there is also a change in momentum. And that change of momentum is what we call impulse. Impulse is equal to the change in momentum. And it is represented as letter I. Again class, impulse is equal to the change in momentum. And remember class, that momentum is equal to the product of mass and velocity. Just like our example, there is a change in momentum. And for that to happen, force is needed to change the momentum of a body. This force multiplied by the time of contact is known as impulse. Impulse is equal to the product of force which is expressed as capital letter F and time which is expressed as small letter T. Analyzing these concepts class, we can say this equation. Since impulse is equal to the change of momentum and momentum is the product of mass and velocity, therefore we can say that impulse is equal to the product of force and time and mass and velocity. The standard unit for momentum and impulse is newton second or kilogram meter per second. Take note class, bodies change their momentum through collisions which may be elastic or inelastic. Let us have a sample problem. Sample problem number two. An offensive player passes a football of mass 0.42 kg with a velocity of 25.0 m per second due south. If the player is in contact with the ball for 0.050 seconds, what is the magnitude of the average force he exerts? Here are the given for our problem. The mass of the ball is 0.42 kg. Its velocity is 25.0 m per second south and the time contact with the ball is 0.050 seconds and we are looking for the force. Remember class our formula for the impulse. Impulse is equal to the product of force and time which is also equal to the product of mass and velocity. Since we need to determine the force, we can do some algebra with this equation. Using the vision property of equality, let us divide t both sides, and we can cancel out time on the left side of the equation. Therefore, we can get this formula. Force is equal to the product of mass and velocity divided by time. Now, let us solve this problem. For our solution, let us substitute our given to our formula. Force is equal to the mass, which is 0.42 kg, our velocity, which is 25.0 meter per second, all over our time, which is 0.050 second. 0.42 times 25.0, we have 10.5 and our unit, kilogram meter per second, divided by 0.050 second. Dividing these, the quotient will be 210 kilogram meter per second squared. And this is our final answer. And that is how you solve this kind of problem. Rearranging our equation will help us understand how impact force is affected by the change in momentum and the time of conduct. It shows that the force of impact is directly proportional to the momentum of the body and inversely proportional to the time of conduct. We can say, for example, that the impact force of a fast-moving car is higher and therefore it can cause greater damage after the collision than the car moving at a lower velocity. On the other hand, the equation also tells us that the impact force could be decreased by extending the time of contact. That is why cars are designed with airbags 
because it can lessen or prevent injuries in the event of crash or collision. The inflation of the airbag is initiated by crash sensors. This decreases the impact force by increasing the time of contact. Next, let's have some example scenarios exhibiting impulse. What do you think is the impulse of an object moving with constant momentum? Constant means no change at all. Therefore, there is no impulse or zero impulse for objects moving with constant momentum. Take note of that class. You now know that any object has momentum and it is equal to the product of mass and velocity. Impulse, on the other hand, is a change of momentum of a moving object. Next, what will happen to a moving object if it collides with another object? Let's have this scenario. Suppose you are playing billiard. The cue ball and ball number one are initially at rest. Then, you use the taco to hit ball number one. Based on the given illustration, answer the following questions. What did you observe on the mass of the cue ball before and after collision? There is no change in mass. How about ball number one? Also, there is no change in their mass. Question number two. Since it is initially at rest, what are the initial velocity of the balls? The answer? Zero. Question number three. After collision, is there a change in velocity of the cue ball and ball number one? The answer? Yes. Question number four. Is there a change in momentum of the cue ball and ball number one? And why? Since there is a change in the velocity, of course, there is a change in momentum. Therefore, there is impulse because there is a change in momentum. Since the cue ball and ball number one have a change in velocity after collision, then both balls have a change in momentum. Also, in collisions, an object that experiences a greater change in momentum has greater impulse. Therefore, this shows the relationship between impulse and momentum that a change in momentum is equal to impulse. Let's have another scenario. Suppose that two cars with equal masses collide with each other. Car A travels faster than car B. They both stop after collision. Note that the bigger the letter of velocity or mass, the greater its value. And in this scenario, the greater velocity is car A. Now, Given this scenario, which of the two cars has the greater change of velocity? The answer is car A. Next, which car has the greater change in momentum? Explain your answer. The answer, car A, because it travels faster than car B. Therefore, it has greater velocity. Remember class, greater velocity means greater change in momentum. Next question, which car has the greater impulse? The answer is car A because it has greater change in momentum. In other words, the object that experiences a greater impulse is the one that has the greater change in momentum. And that ends our lesson about impulse and momentum. I hope you learned something new and you take note the concepts about impulse and momentum. We will continue discussing this topic in our next video lesson. So, to keep you posted, do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell button. Comment down if you want a shoutout. Shoutout to all who always watch and comment to my videos. Thank you so much for patiently waiting for my videos. I really appreciate your support, guys. We are now road to 10K subs. To God be all the glory and honor. So guys, see you on my next video. Bye!